there's so much news concerning Jordan Peele's Nope, I don't even think I can fit it all into one video. Let's get into this. What's your favorite scary movie? Everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. Today we're talking a little bit about Jordan Peele's Nope. Uh, did I say a little bit? Because I meant a lot of bit. Holy crap, there is so much to talk about regarding this film in the past couple of days. The news has been all over the place. So let's get into all of it here in just a sec. But first, if you guys can like this video, I would greatly appreciate that. Oh, and maybe maybe do a little bit of that subscribe in action to this page too. Why not? So getting into this, a new website has been launched for Jupiter's Claim, the faux amusement park we have already seen teased in this film through trailers and TV spots. The site reveals that Steven Yoon's character Ricky Jupe Park is a former child star on the show Kid Sheriff. This was teased to us in an earlier TV spot featuring Steph Curry. Remember he had that weird shirt and I was kind of like, yo, that kind of reminds me of the movie Holes. It looks almost exactly like the poster from that. And yeah, it, it still does. <laughs> on the site, you can navigate through a bunch of the locations there. The most interesting one though is the Winking Well and seems to be a vital part of the movie's plot. Not only is the tagline to the park, we wish you well, but the Winking Well apparently makes your greatest wish come true. Which let me tell you is very ominous and definitely has something to do with the overall plot of this movie. Another thing that's really fun about the website is there's a dark mode that will randomly turn on and off and changes the description of certain areas. The most ominous one is of course the description for the winking well itself, which becomes so much more cryptic, reading, look down into the well, look up towards the skies above. Whatever you may wish, it will not change anything. It cannot be undone. It cannot be unseen. If you fear the darkness that lies ahead, peer into the well and pray you may be spared. You can spend three jangle here to make a wish. Crank it up! I just gotta say, this is one of the coolest things I've reported on, like, all year. <laughs> like, listen, there was some really cool viral marketing stuff that they were doing for Scream 2022 that I was getting really excited about, but this kind of beats up. That kind of blows this out of the water. I gotta be totally honest. This is pretty sick. They made a whole website for a fake amusement park. That's so cool. And there's little, like, things you can navigate through it and all that. It's just, it's very fun. This is, I'm so excited for this film. It's probably the movie I'm the, the, the most highly anticipating of the entire year. For, for sure. I cannot wait for this. The website link will be in the description of this video, by the way, if you want to go play around on there. Now, if I was to speculate on what all this could mean, I would have to guess that maybe Steven Yoon's character has some kind of deal with the aliens, where he can sacrifice horses to them that they maybe eat, because apparently they also rain blood, so maybe they eat, like, the flesh and the skin of horses or something along those lines. It's a horror movie, after all, don't forget. So, maybe they do that, and maybe after that, they're like, hey, we'll grant wishes to you crazy people down there on the planet or something like that. I don't think I'm too far off from saying that. Something along the lines of like people come here to ma make their wishes come true. And it happens through the sacrifice of horses, which is really messed up and kind of makes me sound like a, con a conspiracy nut. I mean, that's a pretty lucrative business right there, Stephen Yoon. I, I gotta be totally honest with you. If you're, if you're having people's wishes come true and all they have to do is just watch a horse get sacrificed and pay you some money, pff, that's pretty awesome right there. That's that's some good some good good business tactic right there, man. But no, I don't think that this is going to take a Wonder Woman 84 angle where it's like everyone's wish just comes true. I think it's something a little more to do with like spectacle and to see something amazing happen and our addiction to that. And that idea works really well with something that Jordan Peele just told Empire Magazine. In a recent interview with Empire, Peele revealed that Nope is about our addiction to spectacle, among other things. The filmmaker is well known for delivering blockbuster flicks with a dash of horror and cultural commentary on the side. While most details of Nope are kept tightly under wraps, the trailer tells us it is about an extraterrestrial sighting and a brother-sister duo trying to grab their money shots of it. Peel says, I started off wanting to make a film that would put an audience in the immersive experience of being in the presence of a UFO. However, it goes deeper than that. I wanted to make a spectacle, something that would promote my favorite art form and my favorite way of watching that art form, the theatrical experience. As I started writing the script, I started to dig into the nature of spectacle, our addiction 
reaction to spectacle and the insidious nature of attention. So that's what it's about. And it's about a brother and sister and healing their relationship. The director also goes on to talk about the part of African American history that this addresses more than anything is the spectacalization of black people as well as the erasure of them. The director explains this a little further by saying the part of African American history that this addresses more than anything is the spectacalization of black people as well as the erasure of us from the industry from many things. Referring to the Moybridge clip used in the first trailer, he explains, we know who Edward Moybridge is, the man who created the clip, but we don't know who the guy on the horse is. He's the first movie star, the first animal trainer, the first stunt writer ever on film, and no one knows who he is. That erasure is part of what the lead characters in this movie are trying to correct. They're trying to claim their rightful place as part of the spectacle. And what the film also deals with is the toxic nature of attention and the insidiousness of our human addiction to spectacle. Wow, so <laughs> right there, I have so much, I have so much to talk about. I love all of that, first and foremost. That is so intelligent and so interesting. I can't wait to see this movie. Oh, God, I'm, I'm so excited for this film. But like the biggest thing about all of that as a Scream fan is just thinking to myself, Wow, a lot of these things are like kind of stuff that Scream 2022 was kind of just like digging at with its very tiny shovel and Jordan Peele's just getting the hell out of there with like a bulldozer and then just diving right into all of that. It's basically taking that little element of the Scream 2022 motive that I feel is so underdeveloped and you're just expanding that to great new lengths and commenting on so much more than just like little toxic fandom. You're doing so much more than that. Jordan, Jordan Peele's just amazing. I mean no diss towards Scream 2022, but I do feel like its motive is a little underdeveloped and really only comes in in the third act when you get Richie's little toxic fandom speech. The biggest problem and something I've been saying for a while about the new Scream film that I just didn't love and I feel like they didn't necessarily go all in on was the fact that they only addressed one side of toxic fandom. You showed us fans on screen who hated the latest installment of the new Stab film in the, their fictional universe, but they didn't literally capture that other side, which is why I feel like the message kind of flew right over a lot of people's heads. They didn't show like people who love something so much that they kind of gatekeep, where it's like like, they're like, oh, hey, you know, like, we love this thing, and if you don't, well, your opinion's trash, get out of here. Scream 2022 kind of really missed the mark on that, and that's why I feel like a lot of people feel like the movie is, like, bulletproof. Like, you can't make fun of it or you're a toxic fan. Some people feel that way, and I I, underst I understand why some people feel that way. I feel like maybe it's that whole message is a little more implied, but they could have done a, a better job, I think, of getting that message across. The thing that's so much more interesting about Nope to me, though, is it's so much wider than just movie fandom. It's talking specifically about just a spectacle in general. And he even says in that quote where he's like, well, yeah, you know, like my favorite kind of spectacle is like going to the movie theaters and checking this out. But it's beyond that. It, it's actually even commenting on like how African-Americans are, are spectacleized and how there's like this erasure of people like the guy on the horse in the first ever movie ever, technically. No one knows that guy's name. So although there were some shortcomings with the message in the latest Scream film, I feel like Jordan Peele is going to pick up those pieces and do it even better while also adding more to the social commentary stew. What do you guys think about all of this news for Nope? I mean, li listen, <laughs> there's so much news about this film. I don't even think I covered everything in this film. I, I did like as much as I possibly could without making this video like half an hour long. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Are you excited for Jordan Peele's Nope? Do you kind of like what he's commenting on here? Do you Are you interested in visiting that website, Jupiter's Claim? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this new Nope update. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates on all your favorite horror movies coming sometime in the future. If you want to support this channel even further, you can support me on Patreon or become a channel member by clicking that join button on my page. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.